The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Amen. There is something inside of each of us, inside of every human being, that longs for something more than what we have. This is not necessarily the worst thing to possess. Although it robs us of contentment, it also compels us forward to seek that which might be possible. Every incredible discovery has been the product of this inward urge. Every beautiful work of art and it, all of the appreciation for it. Every desire to lay hold of something better comes from a part of us which believes that there is more possible than what we know. And this is a beautiful and incredible part of our makeup, but it is something that sometimes doesn't work the way that it is supposed to. As we go through the season of Lent, I have mentioned that we will be talking about, during this sermon, a, an element of our small catechism. Those elements are the Apostles' Creed, the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, and baptism and Holy Communion. These are the most foundational teachings of the church. And today we heard in our Old Testament reading, Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments. Now, without looking back at them, I know this, that whenever I ask people in church or outside of it, I say, do you know the Ten Commandments? They say, some of them. I know you know some of them, but you can return back to the reading here if you'd like to. But I want to tell you something more than just what the commandments are. Because the commandments are special. They have a power to give us something that we don't possess. But it isn't always how we see the commandments. To illustrate this point, I want to talk about something that has happened, though it did not happen to me, back in 2011. It does take place in a, a land called California, a land where I'm from. And though you might lament that at times, and sometimes even I do, there's a lot of beauty and goodness to be found in that place, as there is in every place that God has created and where his spirit abides. California has this going for it. It is home to the nation's first national park. Yosemite. Yosemite Valley is something so incredible and so beautiful that most of you, even if you've never been there, you've seen it. And if that's you, you're like me. I have never been to Yosemite, but I have seen plenty of it. I've flown over it and looked out of a plane window and said, I know what that is. And it is incredible to behold. You can imagine it now, no doubt in your eyes, that image of the river, the Merced River that runs down the center of the valley and the grass and these incredible granite uh, faces that run up either side of the valley. Just sheer cliffs. One enormous rock. Beautiful, incredible to behold. And throughout that valley, throughout that area, there are a number of natural wonders. Rock formations that inspire a sense of awe and a sense of wonder, a sense of majesty within everyone who sees them. Incredible waterfalls that cascade from above where thousands of lakes are found and down into the valley below. And in 2011, there was a church group that decided they were going to visit together this place, and they hiked up to a waterfall 
This waterfall is called Vernal Falls, and you can look it up. It is exactly what you think about when you think about a waterfall. There are beautiful pine trees on either side, but a sheer granite face, a cliff that is absolutely vertical, and cascading off of it, creating a veil of mist, is a beautiful waterfall, about as high as a football field is long. Now, to hike up there, they needed to go on a trail that is known as the Mist Trail, because that waterfall, as it cascades over the edge, it lands not in a pool, but on rocks first, which break the, the fall of the water and create an incredible amount of mist. Sometimes hiking up, there are rainbows in the mist. It is an incredible thing to behold. And no doubt, those folks, as they were hiking up, were inspired by what they were seeing. They knew this, that whatever lied at the top of that, of that hike was going to be inspiring and incredible. And no doubt they found that, as countless people do, who visit and behold the top of that waterfall, a river which simply cascades off into the ether, falling down below. Now you could forgive anybody who would see such an incredible sight and, and think that they'd like just a little bit more. Because there's so many people see what that is, but how many of us long to have an experience to see what nobody's ever seen? to know what no, nobody has ever known before, to go just a little bit farther, because we know that when we go just a little bit farther, we get just a little bit more. And some in that group decided that that would be a good idea. You see, at the top, not only did they find a natural wonder and a sight of awesome beauty, but they also found a guardrail. And they also found a sign. And the sign said... Are you ready for it? Don't go over the guardrail. So the first one in the group to go over the guardrail, because of course, did so holding a small child to get a picture at the very precipice of this waterfall. Now, here's the thing. Most of us imagine that the way life works is you're born ignorant and you grow up to be smart if you're lucky and hardworking. I don't think that's how it works at all. You're born knowing most of the things you need to know, and you become dumber in life as you think you can get away with more and more things. So the child, kicking and screaming their, their lungs out, uh, protested this while the father laughed and giggled about all of this. But thankfully, other people were there to say, hey, you're an idiot, get back on this side, and that person did. And while everyone was focusing their attention on this fellow, Two others found that after crossing the guardrail in a different place, you could hop right over a little piece and stand on a rock in the middle, and you could get pictures there. So what do you think they did? Imagine that. Standing in the middle, balanced on this rock, they saw things that no one got to see, that no one knew. They received, no doubt, what their heart was longing for, and you could tell that it was longing for it because that's what they, they jumped out to lay hold of to see something a little bit different than what you've seen, to know more than you know, to experience a little bit more closely and immersively the beauty that surrounded them. And you know what? That desire, so understandable, but it leads people so often to things that are so incredibly foolish that you just can't imagine. And they stood there until one didn't. And they slipped and fell into the water and the other reaching down to of course save their friend and pull them back to safety laid hold of them and was pulled in as well and the third with no doubt love in their heart and a desire to bless went in after them and then they saw something that no one gets to see as they were dragged over the edge of that waterfall and met the end of their lives with a vision that no doubt, if it could have been appreciated in such a moment, was majestic and incredible. But most of us might say, not worth it. Why do such a thing? What more could be done for people who are willing to chase after nonsense like this? You know, the guardrail was there, 
The guardrail is there to keep you from doing these kinds of things, to protect you and prevent you from falling in. There was a sign there that said, don't go over the guardrail. You know what else it has? A picture of someone going over a waterfall. Saying, don't do that. So even if you don't know what the sign says, you could figure this out. But the problem with signs, the problem with a command, with a word like this, is that you have to actually believe in the people who put it there. Because there's a chance that maybe the person who put that guardrail there, they're just trying to stop you from messing up whatever they like about this. Maybe they don't really care about you. Maybe they care about legal liability. Maybe they care about blessing their life and protecting themselves and not blessing your life. Maybe they're not trustworthy. I mean, it is possible. Heaven knows so many rules in life seem arbitrary, and I'll be honest, I think many of them are. Where do they come from, and what purpose do they serve? And that sign there, perhaps it's meant only to instill fear. But what you do with that sign is going to be based completely upon what you think about the person who put it there. Because if the guardrail is placed there by someone who simply doesn't want you to be blessed and doesn't want you to know the things that truthfully, deep down, you really want to know, then why bother with it? If the sign is there only to prevent you or to prevent many people from experiencing that one ultimate step that you long for and that you want to experience, then maybe don't bother with it. But what if it's there because somebody actually cared about you? What if it's there because someone knew the dangers that you couldn't know? Maybe it's there because you're not the first to have been tempted, nor will you be the first to fall. Perhaps it's all there out of love and concern, and all of the work of dragging the pipe up the hundreds and hundreds of feet, embedding them in cement so that somebody wouldn't have to experience what they did that day, and for that matter, all who watched in horror. Then maybe we should pay attention to the words of the sign and the presence of the guardrail. Our Lord gives us the Ten Commandments so that we might not have to learn what lies on the far side of them. Because it is the desires of our heart that no doubt always compel us to go one step beyond. But one step beyond is the place where you can't abide. The difference between those who were safe that day and those who didn't make it through it. Five feet? Just a little bit more. And how many times do you justify your own actions in life, your own violations of God's command and what you know to be his will for you with just a little bit more? Just a little bit farther. See, God would spare you. And it's for this reason that he gives us these commands so that we wouldn't have to find out. You see, we imagine that our relationship to God, to being found in his will, is usually a matter of our own choice. Well, what do you want to do with it? But the commandments aren't given to us so that we might have a choice whether to follow God or not. They're given to us so that we no longer need to make a choice when there isn't a good choice to be made. To be able to say, there's a place for freedom. But it doesn't lie on the far side of this because once you go there, you're in danger and God would protect you. But this isn't the whole story of the Ten Commandments because I think most of us believe that that's how they work. They're meant to be a guardrail protecting us from going beyond where we should, guiding us back to the place where we ought to be. They're meant to mirror to us the truth of where we stand on this side or that side of it so that we might know where we are in relationship to God's will for our life. And it reliably works in those ways, to be sure. But the same sense of desire, of wanting to see incredible things, of being guided by a belief that there is more, a desire to experience the awe and majesty of beauty and goodness, those same things that so often pull us beyond that guardrail, those two are meant to be a way that we relate to God's word and especially his commands. Because that day, as most visitors to Yosemite, those people went 
only a very short distance. They saw almost nothing. Yosemite is 760,000 760, plus acres. It's enormous. Most people have never seen even but a small percentage of it. Do you know what the rest of Yosemite is like? It's amazing. It's majestic and beautiful, just as all of those mountains are around. They're incredible. But you must be alive to see them. And what was sacrificed that day for the hope of seeing just one little step beyond where you weren't supposed to go was all of the other steps that could have been taken to reveal a thousand, a million times more majesty and awesome beauty than what they were able to see. And it isn't only that which we shouldn't be doing, but the things we lose when we do them that God is trying to preserve for each of us. It's what he wants for your life is not to rob you from the experience of that which is incredible, but to give you so much more that is. Because it's only on the far side of doing God's will, of no longer making the choices, but acting through obedience, saying that this choice actually isn't for me to make and living within the confines of God's will that we see all of the good things that he wants for us. And if you were to look at the Ten Commandments and to say things like, well, why is it that I can't also just be generally spiritual? Why is it that I have to have no other gods before him? But you will never understand what it is like to be faithful for a life if you were not faithful throughout your life. You will never know what a lifetime of faithfulness is like to God or to see God's faithfulness alone to you when you break it. You shall not commit adultery. How can you know the faithfulness of another human being? How is anyone supposed to know yours? But in a moment, it's washed away because you needed to see what was on the far side of God's command and you didn't ever stop to imagine what was on this side of it. To say you shall not covet seems so unreasonable because why shouldn't I want something else? But on the far side of that commandment lies a desire that can never fully be satiated But on God's side of that command is finally feeling satisfied with your life. And maybe you have been robbed and maybe you have been robbing yourself of those experiences because you wanted to know what was on the far side of that command. And maybe you too have been swept away and in a breathless moment realized just how far things had gone and how out of control you now were in your life. But God will spare us, for he loves us, and he grants us these words because he is the one who places the sign and the rail there, the command of God to hold us safe and to place us back where we belong. He is the voice of the people calling calling them back. Do not go any farther, but return to me and be saved, be saved, and be safe. This is the command of God. And though you may feel like you know some, they are worthy of knowing all. Because what is found on God's side of that is the salvation that he promises us in this life. Let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you that you love us and you will save us. Lord, save us from ourselves when our, when our hearts drive us away from your word and your command and to things that you do not desire for us to choose but in humble obedience simply to turn away from trusting that the one who has warned us is one who loves us so help us to fulfill your commands to be turned back to you and to receive the salvation that you offer to us through jesus christ our savior our savior and lord amen